My friends, this channel was created so that your learning experience becomes extremely pacey. You don't have to consume an entire podcast, but you do have to watch a bunch of the highlights of different podcasts on this channel. This is TRS Clips. I'm feeling this urge to bring up the word atheism, sir. Are you an atheist? What does being atheist mean? I don't have an answer to that question, but I'll try answering it. I think it's a lack of a belief in a higher power. One should not believe in anything. One should know what is. And what is? Just your consciousness. Just consciousness. That has something very flawed and faulty about itself because it suffers. Suffering is a fact of life. It's the first of Buddha's four noble truths. We suffer. Life is suffering. Right? We suffer. Hmm? That's also what the existentialists start out with. There is an existential angst, right? That's also what Vedan seeks to address, Taptre, the three kinds of inner sufferings, inner fevers. Huh? So there is suffering, there is suffering. And I will limit myself to what is purely verifiable. What are the three kinds of inner sufferings? Uh, one is uh, Adi Bhautik, the things that... Uh, Mm, are purely material in nature. For example, a stone comes and hit you. Then uh, Adi Devik. Adi Devik. Things that are material that you but you cannot make sense of them, so you attribute them to the gods. Mm. For example, there is a famine. Mm. Mm? It is a purely physical phenomena, but because you do not know what exactly caused it, so you say the gods are angry, therefore it didn't rain. Or an earthquake or whatever. Or an earthquake. Mm. Or a plague, something. Then there is Adhyatmik. Adhyatmik. When you have everything in abundance and yet you are unfulfilled, that's when spirituality really starts for you. That's the Adhyatmik Taap. So, Adi Bhautik, Adi Devik and Adhyatmik. These are the three kinds of inner angsts. Out of which two are actually outer. Only mm. one is inner. Mm. Coming back to what we were talking about. You were talking about verifiable. Yeah, so the only thing verifiable about life is that there is somebody who is talking and the speaker suffers. I do not know about God. So why should I talk about atheism or uh, uh, theism or, or even say I'm an agnostic? I won't claim either of these positions. All I know is I am. Mm. Because if I do not exist, who is talking? Mm. There is a speaker. There is a speaker and the state of the speaker is of suffering. That's the only thing I know. All else is a story. And we are not here to kid ourselves with stories, are we? We are here on, on something serious. We are serious about tackling the problem of human suffering and the angst contained in very human existence. That's what we want to understand and challenge. So I suffer. I start from there. Huh? I suffer. I am, and if I am, then this chair is. <laughs> because I can't say I am. Sense this body. So the way I perceive my existence is wedded to this body. And if this body is, then this chair is. So I am and I am implies this world is. So somehow this factuality that I begin with is itself containing suffering. Me and the world, which means the relationship between me and the chair, me and the entire world. That's where I begin from. But there is no God in this. Where does God come? Relationship. That's what comes. What's my relationship with the world? What's the relationship of this sufferer with his own body? The body is a part of the world. The body is a part of the world. What is the relationship? True spirituality, coming from Vedanta or any other place, actually explores nothing but this relationship. If you... If you look at the various uh, branches of Indic philosophy and if you look at the various interpretations of Vedanta itself, there is a Dvayat, there is Dvayat, there is Vishishta Dvayat, there is Dvayat Dvayat. All that they are trying to come to terms with is the relationship between Purush and Prakriti. The relationship between consciousness and the contents of consciousness. The relationship between Jeev and Jagat. Hmm? What is the right relationship to have with the world? That's the elementary question even a school kid should ask. And that's why this, this conversation, even if it looks heavy, is actually very important and should be very interesting to even a teenager. Mm. 
वट इज द राइट रिलेशनशिप टू हैव विद द वर्ल्ड वट शुड द राइट रिलेशनशिप आई शुड हैव विद माई क्लासमेट्स विद माई कलीग्स विद दैट गर्ल विद दैट बॉय विद माई विद माई स्कोर शीट विद द एंट्रेंस एग्जाम विद माई पेरेंट्स विद दो विद दो लूमिनस ऑब्जेक्ट्स इन दैट इन इन दैट शेल्फ इन द मार्केट what is what is that 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 new car model voluptuous looks so beautiful what's my relationship with that because the relationship is not right hmm i'll suffer and suffering is the fact of my being one has to be very conscious of it and one has to love oneself and one has to be very respectful of oneself to say i'm not born to suffer what happens is that the spiritual inquiry does not even begin for most people because they reconcile to their suffering too easily they say oh if i am suffering everybody else does Mm. what else are we born for they give decorated names to their suffering they would simply say oh i am bored you're not bored son you're suffering <laughs> you're not bored but if you if you label your suffering as boredom you will give it very uh, artificial and superficial solutions you will say oh, it's a weekend let's go and watch the latest flick and that would relieve you of your state suffering state for a while and that satisfies you you should not be satisfied don't be satisfied too easily Hmm? have have a great lust within for joy for the real thing for the total ask for something that's immense don't just be happy with with trivia and 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 and, and bits and pieces and somebody is throwing crumbs at you and you say yo i got it in my lab i'm mm-hmm. satisfied not not that kind of thing especially to young people i'm saying hmm? you should be very ambitious in the real sense ambitious not just in the sense of owning the latest uh, ipad or or or, or that uh, coveted job ambitious in the sense of extracting the maximum from life am i alive if i am alive what am i alive for to just live the way i am currently living the question that i ask is allow me two minutes more on this sure sure the question that i ask is anybody i meet 10 years before had you been told hmm offered a deal that you will have 10 years hence the kind of life you are leading today would you have taken the offer yeah and in cent percent cases the answer is no let's say you are 35 at the age of 25 if you were shown a glimpse of your life as it is today at the age of 35 had you been shown a snippet here this is the way you would be living at 35 the way you are living today would you have accepted it people would say no this is not what we wanted when we were 25 i said then why do you accept it when you are 35 why can't you rebel a young man has to be rebellious and by man i i repeat i mean both man and woman in fact women need to be rebellious even in an even deeper sense than men because they are more subdued more subjugated in in, in some way still we, we call ourselves a liberated society and all that is another thing so so that thing has to be there i want the real thing I don't want to be satisfied too easily. I want to challenge the world, and before I challenge the world, I want to challenge myself. Which means what and daily activities. Which means everything that limits me, every every cheap compromise that I make, has to be kept aside. I'm not I'm not a teeny weeny little one. Hmm. I'm immensity itself, and I, and if that sounds too much, too heavy. simply say can i be better than the one i deem myself to be i don't suppose that's too much to ask for right mm. nobody is happy the way he or she is so why can't you strive to be better as simple as that that's spirituality mm. you know so like in this podcast every sentence you're saying is adding value to my own head as is the case of the listeners uh i have very different beliefs from you again i repeat that like there are many things you're saying which i disagree upon internally but i still i'm gaining value from what you're saying somewhere else it's helping me i have a very strong opinion on god maybe because i've i would like to believe i've seen miracles in my own life i've had dreams where i felt like god has visited me and told me things i've applied it in my own life and that's led me to higher planes of joy uh i'm the happiest i've ever been in my life and this plane of happiness has been created because of finding solace in what i think of as god and i think of as god as light and purity if you enjoyed this video just know that this entire channel is full of playlists that will take you down different pathways of learning all sorts of subjects all sorts of genres all sorts of guests but the one commonality lots of knowledge enjoy trs clips